Hey everyone, have you ever tried to learn how to code but got stuck? In my new Private Fan programming class, we're going to break that loop. This course is primarily focused on people who are complete beginners, so don't worry if you don't have any background. This course is different than other courses because we're going to teach you to think like a programmer and solve problems like a robot. So let's get started. Hi everyone. So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about what we did in the last time and how to extend that uh, a little bit further. So last time we talked a lot about using Python as a calculator and to be able to perform these arithmetic operations that we would do on a calculator. And the reason we wanted to do this is because we were by manually calculating this to try to find the roots of this equation. So we kept plugging in numbers. We want to be able to do that with Python because this is a little bit of more unwieldy of a formula than this one, right? And it's also just nicer to have the have Python do some of the work for us. And so we don't have to plug this in and, and do it, use our mental math to be able to do that. So we were trying to solve for this formula. Again, fun equals the hours of math squared minus four times hours of math plus seven over four. And we were plugging in hours, different numbers for hours of math. So here, as another as an example, again, we plugged in one into this equation. So one squared minus four times one plus seven over four, and we got negative 1.25. So as I mentioned last time, we could try this out for different numbers. So we could plug in two instead. So instead of it being one squared, we'll have two here minus four times two, and we'll get different number. We could keep doing this, right? I could keep doing this for three. And I would say, okay, what is three squared minus four minus three plus seven over four. So I can keep doing this over and over again. Now, one thing I wanted to note is that this gets a little bit a little bit arduous because I'm going to have to try to find the correct number and replace it. So here I had to replace one with two in the correct spots and I have to keep doing this, right? So here it becomes a little ambiguous, right? If I'm replacing two, I'm not replacing all the twos. I'm just replacing this two with the three and I'm replacing this two with the three. So this gets a little bit problematic. And there's only two places where we need to change it here. So it's not that bad, but you can imagine if I had a very long formula, let's say I have 20 terms in this formula and hours of math was in there. It's very complicated. Every time I would have to want to change and add another number or try it for a different number, I'd have to replace all of those individual numbers. To give you an example, let's say I had something like uh, 1 to the ninth power plus 1 to the eighth power plus 1 to the seventh power plus 1 to the sixth power plus 1 to the fifth power, right? And I don't know, plus 103. This is a little bit of a simplified example. But if I ran this and I got 108 and I wanted to find out what I'd get if I put in two, I'd have to go and every one of these ones, I'd have to replace it with a two. So this can get a little bit tiresome, right? We can do this just like it was in a calculator, but this would get a little bit of a, a little bit tiresome. It'd be a bit of a pain in the butt, right? We'd have to tr find each of the ones, replace it with two. And as I mentioned before, it sometimes can be a little bit ambiguous as to what we want to replace. So the way we're going to try to solve this is using a variable. Now variables can stand in as placeholders for numbers for us. For instance, how we're going to do this, and I'm going to just show you how it works first before we do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to set hours of math equal to two. Now this is a variable, hours of math, and we're assigning the number two to that variable. Now what that does is it tells the computer hours of math is two, right? So it, it stores this in the memory of Python. So Python will remember, okay, if you say hours of math, you're referring to the number two. And this is called a variable in Python. Now variables, uh, we can use variables just like we would the original value and it will compute things for us like we were doing before. Instead of doing two squared minus four times two plus seven over four, I could do, hours of math squared minus four times hours of math plus seven over four. And then we get the same answer we did here, negative 2.25. Basically, variables can act as placeholders for other numbers or anything in Python. It doesn't have to be a number. It could be any object or, or the result of any operation in Python. So this is powerful. It basically gives our program a memory. So Python now remembers, okay, hours of math is two. And anytime I refer to hours of math, it's going to uh, know to replace that with a two. So if I did hours of math times 100, I'm going to get 200. So Py my program now knows what hours of math is. And it is two because I assigned the variable hours of math with the number two. This also means for what I was talking about before is that we could take the same line of code and all we'll have to do is change the number that I assigned hours of math to 
and now it will calculate it for a different number. I don't have to go in and replace it every time like I did here. So this is the practical reason why variables are very useful because now instead of having to keep changing everything, I could refer to something as a placeholder or as a variable. And then now that variable will, will be, that's what we'll perform the operations on. This is known as abstraction. And what that means is instead of something very concrete like this calculator-esque line, I'm going to abstract out this variable and now that's the number we're talking about. So we're talking in abstract terms about hours of math. Now, don't worry too much about the word abstraction. And it's a fundamental programming concept, but probably not one that you need to know by name in this way yet. We just need to know that we can use variables to simplify some of these operations for us. Now, back to what we were trying to solve. I can now try a whole bunch of different numbers out this way. So I could put in some crazy long number, 0.32412312351. And it's going to calculate it here for us. So this is just going to make things a little bit easier for us again in how we're actually doing this. Now, variables, you might I'm calling this hours of math, and you might notice that I have underscores there. So I can name my variable anything I want. I just have there's a couple of rules. I can't have spaces, so I can't say hours of math equals three. If I try to run this, I'm going to get a syntax error. It says invalid syntax. You, you need to have it as one full, one full string of text. You can't have any spaces in it. Another thing that isn't, you don't need to have, but is definitely advisable is to not name it something that Python already has because it will mess with it, right? So something like print, but there's a whole bunch of other things like str, int, bool, float, all, any, if, else, or anyway, there's a lot of these things that Python already refers to, don't use these as names for your variables. Just a quick thing to point out. So basically, if it turns green, you don't want to use it because Python already recognizes that word and you might be overwriting something that means something already in Python. Other than that, everything's fair game. You can name a variable whatever you want. I can say it's variable uh, one equals 100. And now I have set that variable as well. Python will let you know if you can't set it. So another rule you can't do is you can't have a number in the beginning of your variable name. So if I did this, for instance, it's not going to work. It's going to say this is invalid. But for the most part, you can use anything as your variable name. Now, you might notice that in what I've written or what a lot of other people have written, you're going to see a lot of underscores under in, in place of spaces. In general, in Python, variables are written in lowercase and with underscores. And there's a couple of different ways that you could go about this. So if I wanted to say, as I mentioned before, hours of math equals seven, that's how you would write it in Python. Now you could write this however you want. I could have written it like H-O-U-R-S-O-F. I could do this if I want, and there's nothing wrong with that. But stylistically, the best practice is to write in this way. It's what people are going to understand, what people are going to expect. Okay, great. So that's how we use variables. And we were able to use it here to just keep assigning different things to hours of math and calculating it and using it as a placeholder. So we don't have to keep replacing it every single time like we were up here. Now, next time, we're going to talk about how we're going to use these variables in order to really make our whole process here work a little bit easier. So yeah, I hope this was helpful for you. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.